Hello, this is my final project. I decided to create a vending machine. Um, so I started out by creating my high level state machine and I'm going to start in the initial state where t gets zero because the total of a vending machine will start at zero. And then right away it's going to go into a holding value state where t just gets t as long as the clock is running and when you press the quarter in button it is going to add a 25 to the value and it's going to come back to the holding value with a new updated price so I used that idea and I went to I used a dollar as an input also and I added a hundred this time over here and then um, I brought it back to the holding value and you could only press the output buttons and get an output like the desired output if you met a condition where you press let's say the chips button and you have t is greater than or equal to the the number desired for the price so if you did press the chips button and your t value is greater than a hundred you will get the chips out you will get a light to turn on and all will hold true if you have a higher price for a sprite or a water So I, I decided to make my top level design, just wanted to see what it would look like. So you would take a, my inputs are a quarter button, where that adds a quarter, a dollar, uh, a coin return to reset the price, uh, a coke button slash switch, a sprite switch, and a water switch for your inputs. Um, those are all your inputs, and... Um, you go into your vending machine controller, which I will design, and then that will flow into all of the signals for the data path of this vending machine. And out of the vending machine, you get the status signals to flow back into the controller, or you get some outputs where you would have the display of the total. You can have the Coke light, the Sprite light, or the water light if you chose that and you have high enough price. So, for example, I decided to make a data path for the total that will show up. So to start we have the load signal and the clock signal to go into this register and um, this is going to hold the value and this value will always be looped into to these two adders whether they're selected or not is what's dependent on what's chosen. So if it's zero and um, the quarter is selected it's going to go through this adder that's going to add 25 to the block and the same thing with if this choice like if you put in a dollar it's going to add a hundred and it's going to update the new the new um, register number so that will always flow out to the display now those this number will constantly be going out to three different comparators for my three outputs and these are the status signals that will flow back into my controller. Uh -huh. Okay. And if nothing is pressed, we will just connect it to ground. So you have zero. Or if no buttons are pressed, you're going to take the load off of the register. So, um, uh, let's go to... Okay, so this is my top-level entity. I... I hooked up my buttons to uh, button number two is a quarter, button number one is, uh, it's a, what's it called, um, it's a dollar, another button is connected to the coin return, and the clock is always hooked up so that at the positive edge of the clock, it will make your action happen. So it goes into a... Uh, the button, you have the reset, the the clock, different buttons, and then that enables the switches and everything, and that goes out to the display and multiple displays. So then the next the next one I brought, I'm bringing you to the data path I've created. This is the data path. It's going to this is my my register that's going to flow in and add. I uh. 
it's going to add 25. So the first piece that I tried to make was um, a data path that I could ju just add a quarter to make sure that it was working. And um, I hit a hit a spot where I couldn't add 25 because I didn't understand how to. But the idea is here that um, if a quarter was pressed, you initiate the switch, and if the snit if the switch was pressed, it's going to allow the 25 to load into that register and update the display. Um, yeah, so I tried to div divide and conquer this problem by just going smaller, and I unfortunately could not get this to work. So then I go to my next piece of this puzzle, and um, let's see. I tried a lot here. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Okay, so then after that wasn't working, I tried to get more than one thing working. I I thought I'd go down one level and maybe just try and um, dumb this vending machine down a little bit. And I uh, I just wanted to press a button and get one of the lights to light up, so unfortunately I couldn't get that working either, but I just figured I'd make a state machine, and I couldn't even get that to work. So here's all my logic, my processing. Um, yeah, so unfortunately it doesn't work, but all of the design is, uh, it's correct. I just, I got stuck when I had to try and add the original value to a to a regular number. I even tried different Verilog uh, different Verilog files to just add maybe you know uh, I even tried to maybe even go through the the one incre one bit incrementer that you showed me in class and I thought I could do a for loop to go through that 25 times and then come out before that but I couldn't even get that to work. Um, uh, this is what I have, so, like, I don't have anything to work, but this is supposed to be my quarter in button, and then this is supposed to be my dollar button, and then this is the coin return, and, um, yeah. Well, that's it, that's all I have for my final project, but, um, uh, yeah. All right, my name is Christian Marcy. This is my final project. I chose to do a vending machine by myself. Uh, came out to be a little bit more complicated because I tried a very complex design to start with and then tried to go smaller and smaller and unfortunately I could not get it to work. Uh, yeah, that's it.